I found out something what this week. It? What? Do you ever do those things? Like, I don't know what they're like. You can call them habits. You can call them traits. Just little actions that you do that you right. think is fairly personal to you. It's like it's just it's just me. This is what I do in these sort in these sorts of situations. And then you find out everyone does it. Not everyone. A lot of people do it. Not a lot of people. An uncomfortable number of people do it. Your parents. Oh damn! Like yeah. genetic traits. Maybe because I ha- I do this thing, and I think you know quite well. Well, I think you might have experienced it. You right. in particular would have experienced this a right. lot from me, right? Okay. It's um, when I'm when someone's roasting me. Yeah. And I don't have a comeback. Yeah. I do that sort of fake laugh and make that face. Yeah, I think you've seen yeah, it multiple yeah, times course, before, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, right? I know that's not unique. I know a lot of people do that, yeah. but that's like, I think in our group, that's like a my, that's like me. That's yeah, what yeah. I do, right? Yeah. But um, I was in the kitchen with my dad and my mum. Uh-huh. And at this point, my mum's been roasting my dad for like 20 minutes, like straight. Literally, my dad's just sitting there quietly, just not saying anything about it, just taking it all yeah, in. Yeah. But my mum's just like giggling to herself, roasting him and walks out. <laughs> And as soon as she went out, he didn't say anything when she was in there. Yeah. But as soon as she went out, just, he's cooking something. I was just hearing him going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, yo. <laughs> the apple doesn't fall too far from You've the You've never seen that before. I've, ne- I've never experienced this in my life. With my dad. With my right. dad. I've seen other people do it, but my dad. And I, I, it's, it's weird to say this, but like, I found a new level of respect for him, mm. right? Because mm-hmm. I always, th- he, he's not a serious guy. He's quite funny, but I never saw him do this. Yeah. But it's like, is this a thing? Was this a thing back in your hometown? Like, So you've got respect for your dad because mm. neither of you are able to come up with comebacks. Exactly. <laughs> that's why you've gained more respect for your dad. <laughs> right, I think so, yeah. That's that's what we're discussing right My now. My mum was roasting him hard. Yeah. Like, I, I even, if she did that to me, she's never, I, I was like, your mum, man, where are these jokes coming from? Uh-huh. Like, Because that's another thing. I never realised my mum had that in her. Right. <laughs> She's normally such a lovely woman, but she was just parring him out. Can we have an example? Like just like you're, you're like just parring out his cooking in particular. <laughs> She's like, "Why are you smelling the food like that?" <laughs> She's like, it's like, stop licking your like fingers. Stop doing that." She was just like telling him what to do, yeah, parring him out, yeah. laughing, and she was giggling to herself. That's yeah. the thing. I think what needs to be done here is if for me, what I've got from this story, mm-hmm. if you want a job done well, mm. do it yourself. Don't let someone else do it and then sit there dissing them. That's how I feel. Exactly. You know. Right. He's cooking. Let him do what you got to do. He cooked really badly, but it is what it is, isn't it? What did he make? I can't, it was so dead. I, can't, <laughs> just, just, I don't want to add salt to the wound. Like, it's, just, it's, not, it's not like that. He's already gone through that experience. I don't want to power him out again. But it was shit. It was shit. This is the Grass Tooth Podcast. Yoni. Yes. Have you been watching anything recently? I have, yeah. Tell us about. Yes, I have. What have you watched? What Jennifer did. What did she do? She did a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Jennifer. She's been a... I'm guessing you're still on your true crime binge. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's the recent one that I've watched. And just before I go into it, a big shout out to our boy, Arthur, mm-hmm. otherwise known as Arturito, to, uh, mm-hmm. to close friends, um, who is one of the editors on this on the show. Congratulations. And Arthur. it's like, it's not even his first. This mm-hmm. guy, man, he's a, he's a legend. Second Netflix credit. Second Netflix credit. The first one was the F1 documentary, mm-hmm. which was like number one for a while. Yeah. Um, and he did something else on Amazon as well. I think it was like the Burnley documentary or something. So this guy's been moving, man. Shout out to Arthur. He's been moving, Arturito, yeah. Hopefully we'll get him onto this podcast at some yeah, point yeah, as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, Jennifer, man. Jennifer's been a, she's been a naughty girl. Mm. What's she up to? A lot of things. Give us a breakdown. Um, I've learned my lesson from before, so I'm not going to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. What okay. was the lesson you learned? <clears throat> that I keep spoiling things. Did someone say that to you? Someone said that to me. Who? You. Oh, okay, fine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not going to spoil it, okay. but I think one of the areas I wanted to talk about was um, like one of the key elements of it, or like mm. a big part of, of, of the show, is like just mad parental pressure. Right. Um, in particular in, in sort of East Asian households, but I think in most Asian households, yeah. like in, in, in your culture as well, like, yeah. The, the disgusting amounts of parental pressure mm-hmm. and what it leads certain kids to do. So that's the underlying theme. And one of the f- kind of things that really sort of resonated with me was um, she broke down when she was a kid. She was maybe like 10 or 11. She broke down um, in a piano lesson. Mm-hmm. 
and just saying, basically saying, I can't do this anymore. This is too much, like in a piano lesson, mm. right? And that gave me some flashbacks because um, you know this. I'm a pianist. Mm -hmm. I was taught the, I was taught the piano from a very young Your age. Your mum's a piano and teacher. And my mum was the piano teacher. Yeah. Right? Shout outs to Michael Haneke. Carry on. Uh, excuse me? Sorry, don't, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> um, and it gave me some flashbacks to those times because um, I was like, I was 11, 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. And my mum, she's a lovely woman. But like at that time, I think I mentioned it before in a, in a previous episode. She was in a sort of tiger, Asian, like Asian tiger mum mm -hmm. sort mm -hmm. of era. So she was, had the stick out. Mm -hmm. Um, anytime I got the wrong scales, slap my slap my knuckles. Knuckles, yeah. Slap my knuckles. Nice. So I think that's the typical punishment. That that's so good as well, because like when yeah. you hit them on the knuckles, they can't play. Right. So like, yeah. By doing that, you're just making them more. Making me stronger. Oh, okay, making fine, me stronger. Fine, fine, fine. It was weird because obviously, I've said this multiple times on this podcast. I've got now got mad respect for the likes of Mozart and, mm. and Chopin. Mm -hmm. At the time when I was eleven, <laughs> I was beefing these men. <laughs> I was like, I was like, in my head, I was like, if I ever see these men in the afterlife, <laughs> I'm going to fight them. I'm like, you made me repeat this piece. Uh -huh. You gave me the worst experiences of my life. Um, but now we're here. So um, check what Jennifer did. She, yeah. um, It's mad. It's kind of mad. Uh, yeah, I'm going to watch it soon. How many episodes yeah. is it? It's just one. It's a, it's a documentary. Oh, just one, it's one, like a film, one sort of thing. film sort of documentary. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. definitely check it out. Check it out. Have you been watching? I, mean, I presume you have because you're a he's a film person. But um, have you been uh, been watching anything? Not or? as much as I'd like to. Have. What, is, what a surprise! What a shocker! Busy. It's it's sad. I'm got a lot of things going on. Busy doing what? Loads of things. Okay. Okay. What Gopi did? <laughs> what Gopi did? What Gopi did? But I've been told, and it's. We're back in anime world now. Um, it's my f nephew's favorite anime. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, let me, you know, see what he's watching, see what he likes. Mm -hmm. So I started watching Hunter x Hunter. Wow. And I am now, I've just started season three. Not just started, but I started it like two weeks ago, but I just haven't had time to return to and it. And you're already on season three? I'm already on season three. Jeez. And another reason I watched it was because, you know, that this or that trend that's going around where they, they ask people... Do you like this or do you like that? Mm -hmm, and then the winner mm -hmm. stays on sort of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. They did that with anime. Okay. And there was this one lady where as soon as Hunter Hunter came up, everything else got knocked out. She was like, Hunter oh. Hunter is the best, is the best. It's and like it was, the messy of, yeah. of anime. Wow. So I was like, let's check it out. That mm -hmm. kind of egged me on a bit. Mm -hmm. It's not, as in it's fine. I, like, yeah. it's not even great. It's not even like, it's, I don't know if it's good. <laughs> the buildup of this, I thought you <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to tell me? Hunter Hunter is the best thing since like, I sliced don't, bread. So but... far, I don't understand where the hype's coming from. Right. It's got a very like generic story so far. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what it is. Maybe it's because it it's takes the basics and does it well. Right. Okay. But it starts off with this like it, it's all like oh we've got skills and we they're like in a Hunger Games type situation, a Squid Game type situation. Oh, okay. And then the next season is like a training arc where they go and train and become better at what they do and they learn mm. new skills and Demon stuff. Demon Slayer had a training arc. Yeah, like... I feel like we need a training arc. Do you reckon? Grass Teeth training arc. What, what would the training arc entail? Um, it'll teach me more insults, I can say to you. I think that's what <laughs> oh, I'm lacking I thought what you meant on. like technically getting better oh, trades. But no, no, no. no you just, just want to insult people. More offensive stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You should do like improv or something. Maybe. I kind of yeah. want to do improv. I've always wanted to do improv. But I feel is like this I'm not too a bit shy. of improv? If this is, this is, I think this is my gateway into improv. Uh, right? This is the sort of baby steps into I it. I think you'd be good at it. I think I'd be okay. I think, yeah, I think I'd be all right. Yeah. I'll give it a go. But Hunter Hunter so far... More it's like, been mid mid yeah and like it's not like pushing me to watch anymore really but you're on season three i think three. i'll yeah <laughs> it's not that many it's like 20 minute episodes and they're like it's like there's been like 30 episodes so far oh okay it's not that much of a commitment 30 30 times 20 minutes yeah go on what is it do math do it right now i got a b in math so i don't actually know <laughs> 600 minutes there we go and how many hours is that? 10, 10 hours? hours 10 hours mate <laughs> it's not really egging you on to watch you it, can but... slip a 20 minute Fair enough. into Fair like enough. you know Fair have a lunch break and you're eating and you're watching that's it. true that's true yeah that's true. okay it's not all that but i intend to watch death note at some point mm. i think that's a must watch i've heard some good stuff about death note yeah. um i i think i said a few weeks or a few episodes ago that i was starting to watch jujitsu kaisen yeah yeah yeah, yeah haven't, haven't watched <laughs> <laughs> I went two and a half episodes and when I started to find out they had to eat like these fingers to get right. stronger I was like that's not for me yeah that's not really for me you don't like finger eating I don't like finger eating no it's it's not really for me 
But, is uh, there any like TV shows that you want to watch? Is there anything in the, on the horizon that you're like, oh, I need to get on, on the horizon? Mind? Yeah, I don't think so. The Sopranos is on mine. Sopranos. I need to watch that. Have you watched this? I so I haven't watched it, but you seem like the I sort seem of like the sort of person that would have watched. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got like halfway through it. <laughs> okay, during uni. Okay, but I just wasn't in the state of mind to like properly right. pay attention to but it. But now, ten years later, you think you are? Yeah, things have changed. Yeah, fair enough. Because like I'm closer to Tony's age. Okay. <laughs> maybe I understand him a bit okay. better, you know? In terms, of, maybe not TV shows, but films. There's a, a couple of films I want to watch. What's on? And I'm saying this in the, in the midst of uh, <laughs> two of two film, uh-huh, uh-huh. two film boys. We're going to judge you so hard. I, I mean, I don't care. I know you are. What are you going to say? I judge myself, but the it's Digi- fine. The Digimon movie? <laughs> it's close. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> The fourth one. The fourth one. I've heard it's awful. Is it? Yeah, I heard, I've heard. Like everyone that's watched it said it's, it's like the worst one. It's one of those I have one. to watch for culture. Because... I watched the first three. I loved the first three. I just have to watch, even if it's dead, I have to watch the fourth one. Apparently China hates the Kung Fu Panda series. Really? Do you know why? Why? Jackie Chan? No. Oh, okay. It's because, like, it's such an obvious idea. Right. And they thought they should have come up with it. And they hate the fact that they didn't. And that's why they don't... So they're jealous. They're like, oh, that should, that's be, just jealousy, that should yeah. be our property. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, I got you. That's I'm suddenly very property. scared that we brought up China in this conversation. Yeah. We're going to get some, gonna get some messages. Let's yeah. backtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not making a TikTok short out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda's one. Um, and the other one is um, Monkey Man. Oh, watch, yeah, I want yeah, to watch yeah. Monkey Man. I've, um, I've, heard it's, I've heard it's good from some people. I've heard it's not so great from some people. So yeah. I kind of want to watch it for myself and decide... Um, I like Dev. Dev is cool. Dev. Um, Man I like thought, Slumdog Millionaire. I thought yeah. the film was okay. It's okay. a good, like, debut for a director. But I feel like when you say a film's okay, it's actually, it's actually all right. Because yeah. there's a lot of good films. He says it's, it's dead. So Give if me it's an example. okay. Give me an example. Uh, actually, I won't do Captain that. Captain no. America. <laughs> I won't do that. I won't do that. But yeah, apparently Monkey Man's pretty good. I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Maybe. It sounds like it's my sort of film. Someone said it's the um, it's basically Keanu Reeves. I uh, know it's basically John Wick. It's an Indian John Wick. Mm. Is that the, is that a good sort of comparison? I mean, this person who said it, I don't trust his opinions anyway. Could you so, give me a, uh, like a little hint of who it was? Young Chi. Oh, I see. <laughs> Wait, Chi seen? I don't think Chi seen it. I'm pretty sure Chi said this. No. Has he? Did he not? I can't see Chi seen. Where did I hear this from? Someone said it. it I said think it was when we were like Monkey a Man blog, is yeah. um. Oh, it might be someone else yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm going to give that a watch. All right, Dev, I'm coming for you. What's on my watch list, which is out now? Challengers, I want to watch. Challengers. The Zendaya tennis film. Oh, the tennis film. Yes, yes, yes. You see, that that, that exists, you know. You could go and watch that, but you choose to watch Kung Fu Panda instead and give DreamWorks your money. Actively, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. See, tennis is good, but Kung Fu, bro. A Kung Fu Panda, bro. It's two like martial arts films for you. Yeah, oh, I see it, a trend going on. Mm. And much like that trend, we will look at other trends in our next segment, The Glass Truth. The Glass Truth. Making sense of nonsense. This is The Glass Truth. We discuss serious matters here, okay? Things that are happening around the world. Mm. We discuss them here. We break them down. Down to like, you know, the atoms. Mm. To get a real the mo- good the look molecules. at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What have we got today? Do you want to hear it? I want to hear it. Yeah. Boy 13 finds Holy Grail Lego octopus piece <laughs> <laughs> from sea spillage in 1997. Oh. Yeah? 19 when? 1997. Oh, wow. Okay. A year after I was born. So a rare Lego piece that fell into the sea in 1997 has been found by a 13-year-old boy in Cornwall. Okay. Yeah. Among the Lego pieces that fell into the sea were 352,000 pairs of flippers, Mm -hmm. 97,500 scuba tanks, and 92,400 swords. Right. But octopuses are the most prized objects as only 4,200 were on board. So this kid found one of the octopi. Right. Yeah? Okay. How much do you reckon it's worth? So this this geezer's found one Lego piece yeah. from an octopus Lego set. Yeah. From 1997. Yeah. It spilled into the sea. And it spilled into the sea. And now he's found it. And he's found it. And you're asking me how much it's worth. Yeah. This is like the rarest Lego piece in the world. 
Why is it the rarest? It's just because it's spilled into the ocean. But that, like that, maybe that was the only like thing they had of it. Okay, like if it's the only Lego set that was produced, yeah. that was the octopus. Yeah. Then I then I consider it a bit more a bit more worth than the value I have in mind. Take a look at that. Right. Have you ever seen anything like it? That is the smallest Lego set I've ever. That's, that's not even. A, is that even a Lego? How's that even Lego? <laughs> that's not Lego. Listen, they say. Listen, they report the news. I'm reporting it to you. Yeah, well, okay? this is BS. So you're just calling BS on this whole article. I'm calling BS on that. That's not Lego. Wow. Does, okay. that, does that look like breaking Lego? news here? We That's found out <laughs> this Lego piece isn't even real because we've got the Lego expert here, <laughs> and he just told us it's not real. Does that look like Lego? Be honest. Listen, I'm not I, like I never played with Lego. I have nothing to do with no, Lego. But you don't have to play with Lego to know what Lego looks like. Does I like if someone like told Lego? me this was Lego, yeah. I'd be like, okay, sure. Really? But like, obviously, like you yeah. played with real Lego sets when you were I young. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never used to like Lego, but right. I, I did have a Lego set when I was young. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was Lego? Um, it was probably, yeah, I think it was Lego. Maybe fake Lego. It was okay. It was Le Lego like. It was Lego like. So you're an expert on fake Lego and you think this isn't real Lego? Okay, listen. I used to play with Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Okay. I used to have fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Right. But I would know if it was a Yu-Gi-Oh card or not. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, fine. So that's my point. That does not look like Lego. So firstly, um, you know what, tell you what, when you say an octopus set, I thought it was huge. Mm. I thought it was like a really big octopus set. But right. that is, uh, that's shit. <laughs> that's, that's, no. So you're telling me how much it's worth? One piece for that? Yeah. £1.50. This is the, okay, let's say f mm. it's real. Okay. Then how much is it worth? £2.50. I right. think it's pretty cool. He's found... This is treasure. He's found treasure. It's not treasure. There's like been this nautical themed Lego sea spillage. Very fitting. And he's found treasure. He's a little pirate. And he's found treasure. He's a little... Okay, no, no, I don't want to say what? it. No, no, say no, it. No, I'm not going to say no, it. No, no, say it. <laughs> it's okay. It's a safe no, it's space. Fine. As I know, he seems like a good kid, right? Yeah. He's found something. Are you trying to ask me... If he's, if he, is he going to get money from this? Probably. Or he might keep it and it might grow in value. That's the only one of it that's been found. But... Okay, the, the, I, you probably don't have the answers to this. Mm. Right? <laughs> but I'm curious to see if that was in 1997. So this was a 1997 octopus set, yeah. right? I'm keen to find out if there were many produced, which I assume there was. Like, does Lego normally just produce one special set of, of, of an octopus Lego set? I don't see that happen. That's a mm. bit sad, right? So surely there's a lot anyway. So that shouldn't be worth a lot. I feel like the reason it is newsworthy is because mm. they don't, it's because it's a kid. No. It's because it's a kid. No. It's a it's a cute little thirteen year old boy. That's that's why it's newsworthy, right? If if bloody Owen, hmm. all right, who's forty seven years of age <laughs> from Portsmouth, found that they wouldn't make it's it not a news story. Okay, fine. All right. So it's out of sympathy. It's you know, out of sympathy. Well, they have made this news article. It's like you know they say to encourage kids when they're young. What do they oh, say? Oh, well done, mate. On a yeah. little octopus set. Well done. <laughs> Good for you. Let's make it into an article. Absolute BS. Okay. All right. But speaking of the sea, I remember distinctly at university mm. where we watched and marveled at a video yes. about how deep the ocean really oh, is. Oh, it's deep. It scared me. Did it scare you? It, horrif it horrified yeah. me. Yeah. And we were wondering what other things could be lurking They say at the bottom of the ocean. They say we've only discovered 5% mm. of what the ocean actually is. Mm. So all the things we know about the ocean down to the like depths of, of what we know is 5%. Mm. That's what they've estimated. So the other 95%. There's definitely like sea creatures down there. There's monsters. Which we don't even know about. There's like, and do you think they will surface at one point? Do you think Godzilla might make an appearance yeah, soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like, you know, the Loch, you know, stuff like the Loch Ness Monster, <laughs> all of those sort of things. <laughs> They're going to start appearing. <laughs> Bro, there's going to be some disgusting stuff down there. Uh -huh. Like um, they took, I, to be honest, I don't know. If, I saw some pictures of what people thought were down there. Mm. All right, it could be it could be Photoshop, mm. but from what I saw, it was horrifying. Hey, it, where are you seeing these like, photoshopped images? I don't know, just somewhere on Google, <laughs> just some random website. So it could be, it's ninety nine percent. It could be fake, right? Uh -huh. But it had like it's like this fish with like you can see the bones, the mm. skeleton inside, and it had like two like light bulbs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that sort of stuff, man. That's I've seen the light bulb, the light bulb ones, ones yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. How do they even make light bulbs? Crazy. A fish with light bulbs. <laughs> it's like crazy. Because Cthulhu, you know about Cthulhu? I've, I've heard of Like Cthulhu. the big 
octopus faced winged oh of course like yeah, yeah, yeah. mega yeah, yeah, yeah mega demonic god thing i thought you were saying megatron there no 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 no, no, no transformers mega demonic thing yeah but like there's people can summon it and it will just rise up from the oceans and destroy us all that's mad if you have that power that's mad there's also vishnu he lives down in the oceans do you know vishnu i do know vishnu hindu god poseidon Poseidon, is he down there? Vishnu and Poseidon, I'm pretty sure they're like friends. Homies. They're homies. homies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing spears and stuff at each other. But yeah, I think like there is a lot of like flood mythology mm, and that comes mm. from there's something lurking that deep mm. down there and it'll come out and it'll consume us all. I think what's that? I mean, the the the, the ocean in general is just a booty place. Mm. It's somewhere, it's my worst fear. Because I think we've had this discussion before it, like outside of the podcast in terms of like, would you rather sort of burn to death or drown to death? Mm. And I'd rather burn to death. I think drowning might be the worst possible thing ever for me personally. Right. Um, well, oh, actually, I, I I saw this. It's not meant to be that scary, but I, when I read this, or well, I think I saw a TikTok video of it, it scared me. It was at 1 a.m. Mm. Have you heard of Point, is it, um, Point Nemo? <laughs> Point Nemo. <laughs> I know Point? it doesn't sound scary. Do you know what Point Nemo is? No. Point Nemo apparently is a place in the... It's either in the Indian Ocean or the end, somewhere in the ocean, right. one of the oceans, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Where, if you get to that point, yeah. it's it's closer to to space than it is to the closest piece of land. That's oh. Point Nemo, and I saw a video about that, and I oh, I I was frightened, bro. <laughs> Imagine if you end, ever end up in Point Nemo. What would you do if you if you're in Point Nemo? Nothing. I literally can't do anything. Mate, I'm no not a strong Nemo, swimmer bro. at all. Yeah. You, you're alright at swimming. I'm right? terrible at swimming. Really? Yeah. I'd, I used to have the flippers because I couldn't swim. Oh wow. Yeah. Screwed, but like bro. it's weird because like I don't mind the ocean. Too. I think it's cool, but I know if I get in there, I'm done. You're finished. Yeah. But I'm not too scared of it. Really? Yeah. Strange. That is really strange. And we'll be looking at more strange things. <laughs> In the next segment. Right, stay safe from Point Nemo, okay? <laughs> and we're back. Welcome. Did you miss us? I hope not. Because we're here. <laughs> you wanted Say to what? ask me something. I did, yeah. I've got Can quite f- a fire away? integral question I want to ask you. Go on, I like integral and, questions. Um, I thought this question because um, we actually talked about... Uh, well, I talked about... Um, Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen mm. Finger like eating how the, Yeah, finger eating Yeah So that made me think of something Go on, hit me with it What part of the body mm. Would cannibals Say they find the most delicious? I think this is a pretty easy answer mm. Personally I'm going to go with The rear The derriere The derriere The buttocks Yeah, it's the biggest It's the fleshiest it's used quite a lot for most people. Mm. So I think it makes sense that that would be the most succulent. The delicious. Part. Yeah. Mm. Is that answered a bit too quickly for your liking? I think there's only one answer, isn't there? What is that your answer it's as well? The, it's the like, what else could. I've heard cheeks are pretty good. Cheeks? Other kind of cheeks. Oh, these ones. Not the bum cheeks. Right, okay. I, I was thinking, like, the area with the most fatty parts. So that is your dairy. Mm. That's the juiciest part, you know, mm. like in surgery. When they need to get some flesh mm-hmm. from somewhere else, they normally take it from the uh, yeah, yeah. The, the the buttocks. Yeah. Um, I think it's the fattiest. I think that's why it's the nicest. It's probably yeah, the nicest yeah, yeah. tasting. It's like why the ribeye mm. is better than the sirloin. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's got more flavor. It's more yeah. tender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm just trying to think of what else could be nice. Cheeks could be nice. I was thinking maybe the bosom could be quite nice, but... I don't think there's enough meat. It depends who you're asking. See, I'm looking more at like a bicep or a thigh. Thigh. But are we just doing this because it's um, the just chicken thigh? Just to the chicken. The chicken thigh is nice, but is a human's thigh nice? I don't know. I've never tried it. No, I don't right, you've you never tried it, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to say you're in your Jeffrey Dahmer no, era, no, no, but just, no, just, no, just no, saying, no, just no, asking. I can see maybe a bicep, maybe a tricep. All right, all right. Do you, do you go to the gym? <laughs> maybe a Give me a workout plan. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, um, I've heard a lot of people talk about your uh, your calves. Yeah, they wanted my calves, to barbecue yeah. it. I've heard. Yeah, I've got some nice calves. But then I was I was thinking this right. I was thinking about this. My calves are nice, mm. but I think they'd be a bit too tough. I think they like the chicken breast. 
Right. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's very good with protein, mm. very good for protein, mm. lots of meat on there. But it's going to be, I think it's just going to be too, like sometimes a bit tough. I think you're just saying that so people, you put people off from right. taking a bite. When actually it'll be delicious. The best thing to ever be eaten. Right, okay. Yeah. My calves are nice, so listen. We'll get to 10K subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> and my calves will be on show for you to all look at. 10K special. 10K special. The calves. We're going to have a whole episode where you're only standing up on the chair and all you can see is his calves. The whole episode. Yeah. Make it happen, guys. Just right. for you the guys. The 10K. Yeah. On to other things. Speaking of BBLs and buttock, <laughs> buttock related content. Very good segue. We're back on Drake and Kendrick. So recently, Kendrick has broken some records. The first, like the fastest rapper to ever get 100 million streams on yeah. Spotify for Not Like Us. Mm. Now the fourth fastest to get 100 million streams. Mm. For Euphoria as well. So mm. congratulations, Kendrick. Breaking records as he should be. Shout outs to you, you know? Mm. And to pay homage to these artists, right. we've come up with a little top five tracks. If you haven't given Kendrick's discography or Drake's discography a go, mm. this is a good starting point for you guys. Mm. Are you okay with this? I'm okay. Just before we begin, actually, yeah, I wanted to... Um, <laughs> Bring this up because this I think this will fit into your hands very nicely. Uh-huh. Uh, it's just the geniusness of Kendrick, uh-huh. Lamar, right? Yeah. Do you know the thing about? I saw this video actually about this guy. He basically like reviews raps, uh, rap, like yeah, like tunes that have come out right. and like what people have done and like he really goes into the details of what, what why they've done this and right. like the intricacies of everything. And obviously the dissect podcast. Uh, it's times? not that. It's, okay. it's it's just some geezer. I'll try and find it for you. The right? Geezer. Yeah. We'll find it and put it on and put it on. Right. Um. But. Um, Euphoria. Mm. Do you know the thing around Euphoria? About the title? Yeah. Yeah. What? That it's named after a show that is produced by Drake. Mm -hmm. Where it kind of discusses teenage, you know, Mm. mishaps, Mm. things Mm. that teenagers might do. Mm. And that ties in well with what Kendrick is proclaiming Mm. Drake gets up to in his spare time. Absolutely. Is that what you meant? That's one of it, yeah. And what's the other the one? The other one. See, I, I don't know if this is intentional. Okay. But it, if, if it is, then amazing. Right. If it's not, then still, it's kind of crazy. What does euphoria mean? A feeling of great happiness, like right. almost sublime happiness Yeah. Right, that level. Right. They also use it, so that that's what it means. But apparently they also use it in like when someone like passes away. Right. When someone, yeah, something happens. Just before that moment, you like you feel euphoric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So when they what, see the light, when that moment the light. when they're like, oh. Yeah. So that's what he was. He was sort of. He was he was doing that right because he knew Drake was probably c- like cooking up a tune. Right. So he put euphoria out, mm. and then Drake dropped his um, uh, family matters. Mm-hmm. Right. And he knew that he was cooking that up. And Family Matters, to be honest, it kind of banged. It was a decent tune, right? Mm. It was all right. Mm. It was probably, it was probably best, his, his best work in this yeah, whole in, thing. Yeah, in a while. So he dropped that and he must be feeling good, right? He's like, yo, I just dropped this banger of a tune. I'm happy. He's feeling euphoric. No, was it only six hours later or how, how long after? No, it was like 45 minutes 45 later. 45 minutes yeah, after. Yeah. He kills Meet him. The Meet the Grahams. Uh, That's the other sort of theory around Do you that. know what else euphoria means? If you just look at that box over there. There is a box right there that says Euphoria. Listen, we don't know if Kendrick planted it there, but I'm scared for my life right now. K Dot. Is K Dot watching this? All I can see is K Dot right now. Oh my so, God. I was wondering what you, what you were looking at. He's looking at my Euphoria box. That's crazy. So we're going to do our top five Kendrick and Drake. Sure, sure, yeah? sure, sure, sure. Should we jump right into it? I'm going to start off with an honorable mention. And that comes from his debut album, okay. Section 80. Mm-hmm. My two favourite tracks on Section 80 are Ronald Reagan era and Absol's outro. Mm-hmm. They're both glimpses at like the greatness of what was to come. Mm-hmm. Especially Absol's outro, I feel like, was a glimpse into what he would later do in To Pimp a Wildfly because it is a very, very jazzy record and there mm-hmm. is a lot of like, mm-hmm. you know, high velocity rapping happening and it's mm-hmm. all like, High intensity. A lot of like social commentary. It, it, that's pretty much the whole album, isn't it? To, to yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get a glimpse of that with Absol's outro. That's my honorable mention for Kendrick. Have you got any abs- uh, honorable mentions? I do, but I'm just going to say this, yeah. Mm. Like... <laughs> 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 
Like I like Drake. Mm. Right? But you're asking most me most played artist of last Yeah, he's week. my most played artist. Mm. But like you're asking me to compare him to Kiki. K Do you love me? Yeah. So I mean that's even it's embarrassing to controller. <laughs> controller. Controller. I, like I like it. I don't know why I like it. It's just you a, like just, Drake like when he it. does the melodies, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Melody yeah. Drakes. Melody Drakes. <laughs> singer Drake. I like. I like. Yeah. I like Singer Drake. Yeah. Well, good. I feel like you should just stick to that, man. Stick to what you're good at. <laughs> melodies. That's what you should stick to. Drake. In fifth place, we have the damn entrance. So honorable mentions from Dam. I like Dam. Uh, I think it's probably Kendrick's weakest album. Oh wow, really? Maybe it's like tied sort of. Maybe section eight is a bit better. I prefer it a bit more. Okay. But like the singles from Dam not the singles, but like there are some tracks from Dam that I really like. Um Lust and Pride. Mm-hmm. I really like those mm-hmm. two. But I think my favourite from Dam what do you think I'm gonna say? It's humble. No. No? No. DNA man. Okay. DNA is such a banger. One of my favourite memories is going to see Kendrick live and him rapping DNA. And I had Ryan in a headlock and I was jumping up and down. And Why did you have was, that poor guy in a headlock? He's taller than me as well. Right, so like, so you I, had to I'm about to go all okay. the way up. And then the security guard just looked at me and shook his head and was like, no, no, no violence. No violence yeah. I was violently jumping up and down with him in a headlock. Right, okay. But yeah, so it's, a, it's quite He's still alive, so thank goodness. Yeah, yeah just about. Fine. But if he messes around again, he'll find out. Yeah. What's number strong? Strong fifth. What's number five for you? <laughs> You've just he's he's planted this. <laughs> Listen, I didn't choose for Drake to be your number one artist. That means that you know him well. You know the ins and outs. Crew love. <laughs> in love with the crew. I'm in love with the crew. Not I. I don't she... know why I like it. I don't. I think I like it maybe because the weekends on the weekends track. on it. For sure. So maybe that's do you, why I What like do you it. remember from the Drake verses? Not much. He said something about where Harvard will get him. Yeah, but he didn't. He said he's in Harvard. love with the crew. Yeah. He loves the crew. If you love your crew, that's the, that's the, that's the most beautiful thing. Mm. All right. Do you, love, do you love your crew? I don't think that's what the song's about. <laughs> she's in love with the crew. There's this groupie that keeps following them around. Right. Yeah. And she's in love with the crew, and she wants to get to know them intimately. But he's telling her to take her nose off the keyboard and why is she following him for there's a room full of people you know there's a room full of people right? yeah I'm like go and follow them get off my back she's in love with the crew I just like the tune the tune's alright the tune's okay aye, aye, aye. the tune is nice in fourth place we have the good kid mad city entrance mm-hmm. some honourable mentions from that album mad city mm-hmm a lot of people say that's their favourite, but it's good. I think it's probably my favourite, Mad yeah, City. From, from Good Kid Mad City. Mm. Money Trees, great honourable mention. Like, everyone loves Money Trees. And The Recipe. The Recipe is a banger. To be Absolute honest. banger. The Recipe is a banger. Just listening to that on a sunny day, yeah. with like, the windows rolled down in your, in your car, just driving around. Yeah, The Recipe Beautiful is a banger. Beautiful fe- feeling. But my favourite is the counterpart to Mad City, which is Good Kid. I think that song is the soul of the album. I think... The whole album is that dichotomy between The Good Kid and The Mad City. And both these tracks encapsulate that so well. You feel that like nervousness of being that good kid walking around this mad city, being a bit scared of everything, you know, mm-hmm. that paranoia. It does it beautifully. It feels like an adolescent kind of song. Amazingly done. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> <laughs> Literary references for no reason, apparently. <laughs> So yeah, I, I kind of see. I see what you're That's doing. What I do. yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I do. What's four for you? Furthest thing. I have no idea how that song goes. How does it go? I'm not gonna sing it. But there's a there's a beat switch up, and it's actually the second part of the beat mm. that slaps for right. me. So, so the first, first part, the first part's alright. The first part's kind of gets you in it. You do you like your transitions, don't you? I like. I love my transitions. Yeah. yeah. And the first part is it's alright, but the second part when it switches switches mm. up, that's when it hits. Um, I'm not gonna sing it because of copyright, but. It's, it's of good. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do that. I'll check it out as well. Check it out, yeah. yeah. Furthest thing. It's one of his older albums. It's from Nothing Was the Same. Nothing right? Was the Same, yeah. yeah. Check it out. In third place, we have the Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers entrance. Okay. Uh, the honorable mentions are Count Me Out, Auntie Diaries, and Mother I Sober. I think Auntie Diaries and Mother I Sober, they like. Make me emotional every time I hear it. Mm-hmm. Just great songs. They gave they give me 
that wow moment that Tabimba Butterfly had, mm-hmm. but like double the amount. Uh, but my favorite track from Mr. Moran and the Big Steppers is The Heart Part 5. Okay. Incredible. I think the, the music's incredible. The rapping's incredible. I think I t- spoke about this in the last mm. episode as well. But yeah, it's one of my favorite. You're, favorite you're upset that Drake took the uh, number six. Part six, yeah. yeah. I will never forgive him for it. Drake, you're not, you're not going to be forgiven, Drake. <laughs> <laughs> number three uh, for you. My third. Know Yourself. I know this song. You do know this song. It's not running through the six, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is. I've been running, running through, through the six, six in, in my walls. walls. That's the one. That's yeah. another beat switch up. That's why I like it. But it's just a banger. That's actually a banger, bro. It's from, if you, if from you the say album. so. If you're reading this, it's too late. That yeah. one. It's, yeah. it's a good song, bro. If you say so, man. I'll, it I'll is. believe you. It's just I'll a believe good song. you. How do I describe it? It's just a good song. What feeling does it give you? So when I'm running through this... <laughs> When I'm running through the six, yeah, and I'm feeling quite woeful <laughs> with all your woes, just on your yeah, back, and I'm like, I need you. to really know myself. Like, I need to get yeah, to know yeah, myself yeah, a bit yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I play this song. Mm. Right? When I'm running through six, not seven, no, 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 not five, not five, six, six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In second place, we have the two pimpa butterfly entrance. Yeah. And second, that's second. As in, uh, in first yeah. place, it's also a To Pimp a Butterfly. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. I think that's his best album. First, like, let, me just, let me just say, I think that's his best I album. I think the best is To Pimp a Butterfly. Mm-hmm. My favourite might be Mr. Morrell. Right, okay. And I held this opinion before it was cool to. So mm. look at me. Fair enough. So the honourable mentions are... This one's a bit tough. The Black of the Berry and... E- I, I'll go with I. Okay. I and the Black Berry. And I, I do like the singles version. I know a lot of people prefer the album version, but I like the mm. singles version a lot. Um, the singles version, yeah, it gets me hyped. It's like a feel good, a really nice feel good song. It's a very good tune, yeah. It's yeah. a very positive tune, isn't it? Yeah. Like it just riles you up. Yeah, 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 for sure. And the Black of the Berry, so much aggression, just punches you in the stomach, it's crazy. punches you in the face. It's crazy. But my favorite track. I think I know what it is. What do you think it is? It's not. If you th- I think if you think it's two, so because you're saying there's two right for second and first. Yeah, one of them, one of them has to be all right. No, it's not. It's not, bro. That's my favorite song on that album. I'm gonna throw another honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, no, these walls, absolute banger. That's not in your. I know, I know, I know. So it must be. Oh, it's Wesley's theory. Wesley's theory. Yeah. Okay. No, no, but. <laughs> Crazy. These walls is an honorable mention as well, but like second place, I'm gonna give it to you. Okay. Because I think what he's done on that track is incredible. Like the yeah. how emotional he gets, and that that bit in the middle where like you know when housekeeping's knocking on the door, Mm-mm-mm. incredible. Like the way the music pans when that's happening, it feels like you're in bed and you're just mm. like groggily waking up, and you want housekeeping to go away, but you've got a hangover from the night before. Mm. Incredible, like sound work in that Mm, mm -hmm. so yeah that's second place (sighs) it's kind of crazy oh I'm looking forward to how crazy Drake's is going to (laughs) be it's just it's right in second place for me passion fruit passionate from miles away is it with the things you say again I'd only play this um, when I'm eating a passion fruit Mm. So like that's once, when it hits you hard. Played it once. I eat passion fruit at least once every two weeks. Do you actually? I do. Yeah, from I love where? passion where fruit. Where are you getting passion fruit from? Bro, local stores. Really? There's, there's like local. I don't even know stores. if you're joking or. Not. There's like local fruit stores. Oh. I love passion fruit. I like passion fruit a lot too. Um, so when I eat a passion fruit, I play it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh no! Like if we're being honest, yeah. Like fully frank, yeah. <laughs> the song passion fruit doesn't sound anything like how a passion fruit tastes. <laughs> So like why and I get that it's called passion fruit, but like why are you making well, that connection? What kind of song? What? How does it? How does a song sound like a passion fruit? Like it needs to be like passion fruits are quite like spiky in taste. It is, you know? yeah, and like a lot of like high notes. But that's why you like it. It's like the sort of antithesis of that. Uh, that's why I like it because when you're having, right, you can't be eating a passion fruit whilst right. listening to a spiky song. Right. You need something that counterbalances. You, you know how like when so you, you want to listen to something that puts you pacifies you exactly. 
so that you get Not electrified pa- by the pa- pacify is a very so, no no why it's a derogatory term why is it derogatory pacify I don't I put someone I don't to sleep to, no I don't want to go to sleep oh uh, I just want to be chill relax oh I see I see I this see. is such a summer tune it's a banging summer tune yeah. play it in the car windows down sunglasses on maybe having a you know passion fruit with one hand it's more like a um, lie down next to a swimming pool you know just listening to it just feeling sad Sad Boy Drake. Sad Boy Drake. What's your number one? You already mentioned it. I did. Wesley's Theory. Incredible album starter. Crazy. Like, really sums up everything that the album's about, but doesn't give everything away. And, like, musically, the things it does. Also, honourable mention to... I'm starting to realise how incredible to Pippa Butterfly is. King Kunta. Forgot about that track. <laughs> what an absolute banger. I don't even want to fight people. Yeah. For sure. But like Wesley's theories, I think it's everything I want in a song. It's just there. Bloody Wesley. And what he does with that, like you feel super braggadocious when you're listening to it. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like skipping through the mall, mm. just buying everything I want. I get everything I want. I'm the top of the world. Mm. That's the kind of feeling it gives off. And that's the kind of feeling you feel when you listen to it. That whole album is is perfect for when you're feeling down or you just need a bit of motivation to do something. Mm. The album, man, it's got a bit of everything. If you're in your feels, if you just need to fight someone, you just put King Kunter on, mm-hmm. you can take on the world. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Great album. I think it's I think it's my best. I think it's my favourite album. Yeah. Honestly, like, not just sure. from Kendra, I think like Of possi- all time. Possibly of all time. Damn. Yeah. That's that's one of the few albums when when it came out, I was like <laughs> <laughs> So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I did there, but like, yeah, one of those few, one of the few albums that made me do that. Mm-hmm. Like, not even Drake could do that. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> I get Drake's favorite. I get my favorite Drake jeans. Mm. But anyway, number one. Um, I'm like, huh? Uh, I'm trying to think of what. I think I mentioned it. it before. This is definitely my favorite song. Oh, I know. From time. From time. Okay. Featuring Jenny Aiko. Yeah. yeah. It's just. It's it's chill. I, I, this is this is the sort of Drake I like. Just mm. chill, and and the song itself, nothing complicated. Just a piano, mm. simple beat. Um, Jenny Aiko with the amazing vocals. She's such a great vocalist. Um, yeah, Drake, man. This, this is the sort of stuff we want to see. All right, stop. Stop arguing. All right? Stop going for other rappers. Just make these good tunes, man. That's all it is. All right? That's all you need to do. When I was working at a place and From Time was on the playlist there, so I think I got a bit overplayed for me. But Right, yeah. It's an all right tune. That's good, man. Nice bit of introspection. Yes. Not too much though, that's Drake style. He doesn't like to dig deep, does he? So there you go, our top five lists for Drake and Kendrick. If you hadn't heard these songs, check them out. We recommend them. I also like Too Much from Nothing Was The Same. Oh yeah. Samfer. Too much, yeah, too much. Check Some of his older stuff as well actually was, I don't know why it's not been in my list. I, I actually don't like much of his older stuff. Really? Um, I like Drake after he got his ghostwriters, not before. <laughs> Well, I am one of his ghostwriters, so it <laughs> makes sense. And that is the end of the episode. It is, yeah. So um, a lot to digest. Like and subscribe. Follow us. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. Check us out on all the platforms. Right. And remember, 10K subscribers and you're going to get... Calf special. Calf special. Like I'll literally, we'll, I'll buy a stepladder mm. and you'll just see nothing but you <laughs> and calves. Yeah. I look, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what's going to happen. I want to have an open conversation with his calves. Mm. You'll Maybe get more joy out too. of that. Maybe you do too. Mm. See you in the next episode. Much love. Peace.